Welcome to our devos this week where we are in the book of Daniel, studying that for uh, the next couple weeks at the church, and we'll take a pause in the middle. But we are in Daniel chapter 1, and the subject is private resolutions bring public results. So much credit is given to someone that makes a big proclamation. I am, and this has always kind of been funny to me, I am quitting social media, and they make a big, long social media post. This is why we shouldn't be on social media, and it's distracting, blah, blah, blah. And they're spending an hour on social media crafting the social media post. That's kind of funny to me. Or somebody will talk about a, an exercise plan. They're like, I, every morning, wake up and I walk. Or I wake up every morning and I do 10 push-ups and 20 sit-ups. And, and everybody should be doing the same thing. And we make our resolutions public. And then we start to prophesy that every single person should do those things. But what happens is when we do that, oftentimes we get the reward. Jesus talks about this, and the Holy Spirit's putting this on my mind. When it comes to spiritual practices, he tells people to pray in private, fast in private, because your heavenly Father will see what you do in private and reward you openly. And so the private things that we do, keeping it private, keeping that circle small, like I talked about yesterday, will ensure that God sees what you're doing to honor him privately. So Daniel begins this journey on, in Daniel chapter 1 when he makes the decision that he's not going to defile himself with the king's diet. And so before we make any resolution whatsoever, whether it's something that God wants us to stop doing, something that God wants us to start, we have to, number one, make sure that your resolutions are endorsed by God. Your resolutions must be endorsed by God. You have to know that this is what God wants you to do. A lot of times, you have something that comes across your lap when it comes to an opportunity, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely what I should do, and you jump on it, and you're like, this is it, this is it, and we never stop and ask, is this really what God wants? Does God really want me to do this thing? Or we see somebody around us doing something supernaturally sacrificial, like somebody says, oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm making it a point to give $35,000 to this organization, I'm going to do it. And then you look and go, oh, I should be giving $35,000 to this organization. And we start to kind of get our wheels turning. But you know what we don't do? We don't ask God. We don't really see if this is what God might want us to do. And because of that, when it becomes difficult, we're not really even sure if we should be doing this in the first place. It's kind of muddy. So this is all about our connection to God and making sure that we know what God wants us to do. In Daniel chapter 1, verses 9 through 10, we see God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king, who assigned you your food and your drink, that for why should I see, why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youths of your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. He says to him, he goes, look, I am going to let you do this. And the the one that's in charge of Daniel, gives him permission to withhold from the diet. But he says, I want you to know, if you get sick, I might lose my life. Like, I can't let you get sick for this thing that you want to do. But look at what the very first part of this verse says. God gave Daniel favor and compassion. And God gave that to him in the sight of this person. So before Daniel even had a chance to stop or not eat the king's food and to obey the diet that he wanted to obey, Daniel first had to get the confirmation from God. Now, this could look a number of different ways for you, but here's what it can't look like. We can't do something or go for something that is contrary to what God wants in his word. We can't do something or desire something that's contrary to the law of love and liberty, which means we can't want something so selfishly that it hurts somebody else. We have to make sure that the resolutions that we have dovetail with the will that the Father has outlaid in His Word and in His Spirit. So, the secret about this is, believe it or not, God wants you to know what it is that He wants you to do. He wants you to know the resolutions. And here's something else. I have a suspicion you already do know what those resolutions are. I think you know exactly what God wants you to do. And that's never usually the problem. The problem is that we don't take the first step. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. But today, I want you to know that when you decide that you are going to privately resolve something, 
give it to the Lord first. It doesn't have to be formal. I was listening to a book on prayer, and uh, the writer said that God's time with you, your time with God, your prayer life, does not have to be formal, but it has to be respectful. A lot of times we think that we have to have just the right words and formality. Like we, if we don't know the secret words, if we don't know the secret codes, God's not going to answer our prayer. But in reality, we just have to respect that we're approaching the God of the universe who wants to hear from you. And on top of him wanting to hear from you, he actually wants you to know what he wants you to do. So take advantage of the connection that you have in Christ to God and see if he has endorsed the thing that he's put in your heart. And right now, if you're struggling with something, this might be a good time for you to go, Lord, I want to know. I'm opening my hand. Tell me, is this what you want? Is this really what you want me to do? And ask him to speak to you. And he will. He will.